We did not know she had Down syndrome before she was born. When she was just a brand new baby, we had heard about this team called the Capital City Condors, an adaptive hockey team for children with special needs. And the psychologist had said, this is the diagnosis. He probably won't end up being able to do anything down the road. I love the game of hockey. There's no better feeling than being on the ice. As you say, he's a developmental delayed, but he's uh, not when it comes to hockey. People say, yeah, I have a hard shot. <laughs> I ended up scoring the overtime goal. I got to celebrate it with my teammates and 20,000 people at uh, the Canadian Tire Center, and then I celebrated it again and experienced it again with the Condors. We've just always wanted the program to build a sense of you're an exceptionally valuable person, and it's bigger than hockey. These are the stories. My little girl, she's changing lives just by being herself. Of organizations and people making a difference. When you first tell someone about adaptive wheelchair boxing, it doesn't sound real. And empowering others. It saved my life. It saved my life. Across Canada. I scored my first goal in my first blind hockey game. In our community. It's a clear winter's night at the Iceland rink trails in Ottawa. The outdoor hockey rink's in perfect condition. The fire pit is blazing. The trees are covered in twinkle lights. And there's no better night for a special game of hockey as parents help players get suited up. Well, you have a side. There you go. You're special today. Taking to the ice tonight are the Capital City Condors, a family of hockey teams for children and adults living with cognitive and physical disabilities. For Jim Perkins, the co-founder and GM, special events like these are what the program is all about. These kids, these families, they deal with a lot of things they can't do, you know, and so that's one of the things that we've tried right from the beginning is let's just come up with as many really special events that make them feel like a million bucks. We've just always wanted the program to build a sense of you're an exceptionally valuable person when these kids and their families look back on their childhood. If some of their best memories can be stuff that we've done together, then that's not a bad thing to shoot for. But getting to the Iceland event at this point in the program has been a long road. It's taken the vision of Jim and his wife Shana, countless volunteers, and the hard work and dedication of the families and players themselves. The Wallace family has been involved with the Condors since their youngest daughter Cameron started playing 10 years ago at the age of seven. Their Saturday morning routine is now all about breakfast to get Cameron fueled up and ready for hockey. It was around the time that Cameron was born with Down syndrome that her mom Sandra Wallace knew her daughter would one day play for the team. When she was just a brand new baby, we had heard about this team called the Capital City Condors, an adaptive hockey team for children with special needs. And we said, when Cameron's old enough, she's gonna play on that team. Her older sister, Reagan Wallace, was happy to see Cameron get the opportunity to participate in sports, just like the rest of the family. For my family, like sports always been a big deal. My dad was uh, like a pro softball player and a big rugby player back home. And my mom was always super involved in ringette and she was also involved in softball as well. I did the same thing. So when uh, she started, it was really fun. You know, you get to see your little sister doing the things that you started off doing when you were younger. Despite growing up in rugby obsessed New Zealand, Cameron's dad, Ross Wallace, has fully embraced the sport of hockey. Hockey was totally foreign to me. I, I think I'd seen one or two games in New Zealand and fell in love with the game, loved it, because it was like rugby. I mean, I, New Zealand kids grew up playing rugby like Canadian kids grew up playing hockey. So to me, it was like rugby on skates. Fell in love with it. I think now I'm a bigger fan than a lot of people that we know. As the family packs up and heads to the rink, it's hard to believe just how far Cameron has come since joining the Condors. So y'all set? We have everything? Sandra and I talked about and discussed that that's for her someday when she's old enough to join. And the minute she was old enough, she was in there and it was the best thing we ever did. See how many assists you can get. You got three goals last week. See if you can get three assists this week. Just her standing up on her own was a big deal for her. And when she started to take those, you know, glides on her own, amazing. That was 10 years ago. She loves it. We all love it. It's such a great organization. So we're so happy to trek to that ring. At the Earl Armstrong Arena, Sandra and Cameron's first stop is the dressing room. 
we get to the rink and get organized. She's pretty good to get her equipment on, but mom always helps with the skates and helmet. Once she's dressed and ready to go, Cameron hits the ice to practice her hockey skills. Today is a far cry from the early days when her parents worried about what the future would hold for her. We did not know she had Down syndrome before she was born. And I was like, that wall hits you right. And you were just like, unbelievably emotional. Scary, very much so. We didn't think she would have the opportunity to, you know, every Canadian kid's dream is to play on a hockey team and to make it to the NHL. But when she was born, you go through all those difficult emotions. That's it, Billy. But when I look back at those times now, I'm like, what was I so scared about? She hasn't had an easy road to hoe. She had heart surgery at six months. She's had a number of surgeries through her life, but she's a little trooper. She's always worked hard at everything she does. She's amazing, and she's, um, she makes all of us proud every day. After practicing stick handling, the players are split into teams for a scrimmage. We learned and saw early on that she was dominant what she tried to do and nothing was going to beat her and she, she would challenge herself to do things. So she proved us all wrong. Cameron celebrates her first goal of the game and then heads to the bench to cheer on her team. At the heart of this entire experience and opportunity is the vision and hard work of Jim and Shanna. Good job. We can't say enough about Jim and Shanna. We always say he's the voice and the face of the Condors, and they are incredible people. They have selflessly committed, I can't even imagine, the hours to this organization. As Cameron's practice ends and a new Condors team warms up for a friendly match against an Ottawa police hockey team, Jim steps into yet another role as referee. His inspiration and dedication to the organization has some deeply personal roots. Here we go. I guess deep down it goes back to my own childhood, you know, growing up with a dad who had been an athlete and a, a very active farmer and a really strong guy who was paralyzed at the age of 28 from polio, you know, and so I heard a lot of stories about what his life had been like and his hockey career. I just wished that as a kid and when I was playing these things myself, I was like, man, I wish sports could be adapted so dad could still do stuff. Nice shot, buddy. That was an amazing shot. Good job. Later in life, as Jim spent more time around hockey arenas, he noticed an important population was being left out of the game. You realize there's a lot of these kids that are the world's biggest cheerleaders, you know, whether they're cheering on a sibling or maybe a parent. It kind of struck us that they're not out there themselves enough. You know, and 15 years ago, the stats were around 4% of people under 20 with special needs were physically active. That's not enough. The first step came when Jim and Shauna rented ice for one week in the summer of 2008, and three kids participated. But it wasn't until a few years later, when the Ottawa Senators NHL hockey team got involved, that the Condors really started to grow. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. While the Condors originally started with just three skaters, they've now grown to 130 players with multiple teams and levels. We really didn't envision growing to six levels, ever getting to the place where we had enough girls playing that we had an all-girls team. And it's a one-of-a-kind we just found out anywhere. You can't find another adapted hockey program that's just for girls. A huge part of that growth has been due to the involvement of Ottawa Senators hockey players, like defenseman Matt Karkner, who was their first honorary captain. Some of the first families talk about, you know, when it was introduced, and they even talk about their fear to sign their kid up because they knew their children would love it, but typically a lot of programs start and then they fall off, right? And really Matt coming on board, I think that's the biggest thing that changed. People said, okay, well, if, if a senator is involved, it must be legit. It makes them feel like gold, you know, and, and these guys, because they're humble, I don't think they understand right, what an impact the they're having. You can pass to me, and I'll pass it back. One time we had some kids who weren't well. Matt was out on the ice skating around with them, and, and we got off the ice that day, and one of the dads came over and said, we never know how long our kids are going to live, but we know that as long as he lives, this is going to be one of the highlights of his whole life. Of course, when he left, kids were very sad, but he introduced us to Kyle, and uh, that was another seven-year chapter of just incredible, incredible stuff. 
When Matt left the team in the summer of 2012, Senators forward Kyle Turris took over as honorary captain. Although Kyle is now retired and living in Vancouver with his wife and three kids, the Condors have left their mark on both him and his family. We learned so much about ourselves individually and just who we wanted to be and, and how we wanted to apply those traits to our kids. The positivity, the understanding, the loving environment, everything that the Condors stood for was the environment we wanted to surround our kids with. Kyle's wife Julie vividly remembers the first time they were invited out to a Condors practice. First thing you'll notice is how excited all the kids are at all times. Um, they're all, all age ranges too. They all get out there and they are so excited from the moment they get out, from the moment they get off the ice. So the energy is really, really contagious. They were so excited to meet us and see us and they, they acted like they had been our friends for a very long time. And then you just see how motivated they are on the ice too. And so it was just, our, our minds were blown. When you're in that atmosphere, it's the neatest thing. There's so much love and genuine happiness and joy, and we got to experience that the first time we went, and we knew immediately we wanted to be a part of it for as long as we could. Once snack time's over, it's time for some pickup ball hockey in the tourist basement. Over their six years of involvement with the team, Kyle and Julie created many special memories with the Condors. One memorable moment for Jim came during the 2017 playoffs when Kyle scored an overtime winner and still made it to the Condors annual banquet afterwards. You know that night where he scores the overtime goal in the playoffs against the Rangers and cuts an interview short because he knew our banquet was going on and they bail out of there and show up at our banquet. I don't know what we did to deserve meeting guys of that and, and their wives of that kind of character, but it's been life changing. Long pass up, picked up here by Torres. He'll come in. Torres. It was such a cool experience and I got to celebrate it with my teammates and 20,000 people at the Canadian Tire Centre and then an hour and a half later I got to celebrate it again and experience it again with the Condors. It was, uh, it was really special. Kyle was eventually traded to the Nashville Predators in the fall of 2017, but the couple's affiliation with the Condors remains a highlight of their time in Ottawa. Okay, come over here you guys, we're going to look at some photos now that Mommy found them. I mean, there's so many memories. Skating for the first time, getting my Condors jersey for the first time. I've heard parents say that they didn't think their kid would ever be able to play hockey. And this offers that opportunity. So it's very special. And then the parents being able to support each other, you know, being in stands together and watching their kids play a hockey game together. Even to this day, like Ottawa in general and the Condors have a place in our heart that's just, we'll always be there and we'll always have that connection with them. You just realize that when it comes down to it, any parent would do anything for their kid. And that's what everybody's doing, right? Is just doing whatever you can for your kid to be happy and feel part of something. Jim Stackhouse is one proud parent who has seen his son Cameron develop through the ranks of the Condors teams. He started with the Condors, worked his way up through the different levels. And I, and I think that's the greatest thing about our program is that we take a hockey player who has never played the game and you develop and you make friends and you just develop as a, as a great hockey player. For Cameron Stackhouse, playing for the Condors is about more than just hockey. It's just a good group of guys to be with, you know, it's a, it's a great family to be a part of and it's made me become a better person. 14 years ago, when Cameron received his initial diagnosis, Jim never could have guessed what his son's trajectory would be. He was diagnosed in 2009 as a global delay, and the psychologist had said, this is the diagnosis, uh, it's provisional, but he probably won't end up being able to do anything down the road. Fast forward to the Condors, he's now playing on one of the top level teams with the Condors, made tons of friends, rides OC Transpo by himself, and so being told in 2009 that he's not going to be able to do anything, you just don't know what, what is going to happen. And that's what makes this program so special. The experience isn't just life changing for the players, but for the volunteers like Courtney Rigo as well. A lot of us are hockey fans and hockey and we just want to give back to the community, but they're giving us more than we could ever imagine. That's it Cameron, nice head up, nice head up. Don't judge a book by a cover because a lot of these players were deemed they're not going to be able to do anything and they've grown up to, they have jobs, they have friendships, they have anything. They're just like us. 
all they care about is love for the game, and it's really showed me the true meaning of hockey. It, it, that truly is what it is. Playing hockey is it's a great feeling. I love the game of hockey. You know, I just love being on the ice. It's just, there's no better feeling than being on the ice. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. It's the Iceland Outdoor Hockey Night, and Cameron Wallace is getting ready at home. In her bedroom are multiple posters, jerseys, and memorabilia of her favorite NHL player, Kyle Turris. Her mom, Sandra, knows the two share a special bond. That first year when Cameron started was when Kyle joined as the Condor's honorary captain. Him and Julie, his wife, are incredible. I think him and Cameron have always had this special place in each other's heart, and he's truly incredible. Has always been so supportive. The feeling is mutual for Kyle. Cam's the best. I think I'm Cam's number one fan because the uh, we share that for each other. But no, she's just she's got such a personality, and I mean the family is just an incredible family. You know, and Sandra and Ross uh, are so supportive, and Reagan um, so understanding and, and supportive, and and Cam just the the shining star. So this is a sign I made for Kaya. It says, I hot Kyle. He signed it. He's my first name and he's an awesome guy. What he has done for the Condors is incredible. Him and Cameron developed a little friendship. He has become a really good family friend. And when he was traded to Nashville, we were all devastated by that and had lots of tears for sure, Cameron especially. But in that, we've had the opportunity to travel to Nashville to go and watch him play, and the Condors were invited to a tournament down there. We were able to visit his family down there. He's just, what he has done for the Condors is incredible. He has, you know, we always say he's more than Kyle Turris, the hockey player. He's Kyle Turris, their friend, and he truly is. There you go. As Cameron gets her hockey gear on before the big outdoor game, she's excited to know all her closest Condor friends will be out on the ice with her. Are we ready? One Condor who's participating tonight is Dan Sexton, a 32-year-old player who's a huge hockey fan with a long list of favorite NHLers. Call me David Kusineo, Sarkazian, you know, Bam Bam McGranton, you know, Alex Ovechkin, now Matthews, he's too cheap. <laughs> I've heard hockey since I, was, uh, since I was three years old. It's pretty fun, yeah. We're playing with your friends, you know, you know, score some goals. Dan even styles himself after the best of the best. Who do you play like? Uh, Connor McDavid. People say, uh, I have a hard shot. <laughs> His dad, Alan Sexton, believes playing with the Condors has given Dan the opportunity to take on more responsibility. Some of the younger kids looked up to him just because he was, you know, he was a bigger kid, but he, uh, he also could skate and that. So he, uh, I think it, you know, it was that part of it uh, appealed to him a bit. And, he, uh, I think he enjoyed it being, a, I'm going to say, a mentor, just an older kid that younger kids look up to. He's sort of making the next step to, you know, I guess being more of an adult and uh, helping out and sort of giving back a bit. Hey, hey buddy, be careful. Oh, yeah, you, you don't want to fall. As you say, he's development delayed, but he's uh, not when it comes to hockey. <laughs> so. Cole, get the puck, Cole, get the puck. Vinny Cameron. Out on the ice, it's just pure joy. They love being out there. It's pretty neat to watch it every week. You know, they say it takes a village, and the Condors is a village of people raising their kids and out there battling for the best for their kids, and there's a lot of love in there, for sure. Okay, can you jump in line here? We want to get everybody lined up. Before the game starts, Jim gathers the teams for a group photo. Tonight, the Condors are hosting players from the local junior team, the Ottawa 67s, as well as a team from the U.S. Embassy. As the Condors family, we want to say a huge welcome to our friends from the 67s. And uh, our friends from the U.S. Embassy. Also, a very special guest tonight, Ambassador Cohen. Thank you, the U.S. Ambassador. Dan joins the ceremonial puck drop with the U.S. Ambassador before the game gets underway. Here we go. Ready? Although players like Cameron and Dan have learned a lot through the Condors organization, they've also taught their families and others how to live life to the fullest. 
She inspires us all for sure. She teaches us every day how to be better people. She teaches us a lot, and it's funny because you would think we would teach her, but she teaches us how to live life and love life and enjoy life and, and love your family. He doesn't seem to get down. I'm not sure where that comes from, because he, but I think it's just because he, he just keeps it simple, you know, and he just goes to work, you know, uh, and looks for the best in people and tries to give them the best himself. In the end, Jim has found that no one leaves this team unchanged. So you got a pro player like Kyle and his wife saying, I need to go to the rink every week because these kids and these families are a reset for me. You've got volunteers who work with us who tell me that they were struggling with depression and they feel like these kids kind of have saved their life because they knew they had Saturday to look forward to and that they, they were going to spend some time with kids that needed them. You realize a sport is great, but it just becomes a conduit to something much bigger that's actually being developed in a human being, right? And uh, so, yeah, sport becomes, um, it's bigger than hockey. Let's go two goals. I step for the Sens. I have a move like, uh, like uh, Conor McDavid. After so many years on the ice with the Condors, Jim has finally discovered the most important metric for success. You see that many people smiling, not just the kids on the ice, but the folks they were playing with, the 67s players, they're all smiling out there. You look up, the parents are smiling. Like I was saying to some of the guys from the embassy, this is chaotic tonight. Uh, but he said, but look at everybody smiling. And I said, well, that's how we try to measure success is by the size of the smile. Producer and director, Tim Alp. Writer and story editor, Maureen Carter. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Supervising producer, Jennifer Johnson. Content development specialist, Karen McGee. Manager programming, Lisa Angagne. Director, content development and production, Kara Nye. VP, content development and production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Produced for AMI by Mountain Road Productions. Copyright 2023, Accessible Media Inc. An AMI original production.